This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon. This is the regular March meeting of the Davenport Public Library Board of Trustees for Tuesday, March 15, 2022. We're meeting in the Brook Room of the Library at Fairmont. My name is Steve Deming, President of the Board of Trustees, and I'd like to call this meeting to order. First item on the agenda is roll call. Malavika Shrikandi? Yes, present. Amanda Motto? Here. Maggie Motto? Here. Judy Lance? Here. Craig Cooper? Here. And myself, Steve Deming. Um, Sylvia Roba, Joe Heinrichs, and Tom Engelman, um, I guess, are expected, but uh, are not present on. yet. Sylvia. Oh, on. Oh, hi, Sylvia. Can you hear us? It's calling your roll. And the record show that Tom Engelman is now present. Hi, Sylvia. Can you hear us? Okay, just called the roll, so I have you in here now. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Joe did, Joe Heinrichs uh, did say that he would be here, but uh, thought he might be late. So we'll proceed. Um, also, I'd like to uh, introduce other folks who are here um, Jeff Collins, library director, uh, Lexi Riley, assistant library director, Jennifer Williams, HR operations manager. Tracy Moore, Development Officer, uh, Marion McGinnis, our City Council Liaison, and Casey Shipley, Recorder. And also along with that, uh, the, along with the introduction of our new Library Director, uh, Jeff Collins, who we're very glad to have here, uh, I'd like to introduce him and uh, if you have any comments or anything that you'd like to say. Yeah, thanks, Steve. So I just wanted to say hello to everyone as well. Uh, thank you very much again for this opportunity. Uh, excited to join the team, obviously. Uh, I do want to just give a quick shout out to the uh, library administration and the stellar staff that we have that have been able to fill in in the interim uh, for when Amy was uh, retired and then uh, for the last six weeks uh, stepping up. So everybody did a really great job with that. Thankful to them and thankful for our staff and community for welcoming me on uh, the first right at 30 days now as well. So uh, I'm thrilled to be here and I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody has at this point and otherwise just be through the process. Thank you very much. Welcome. I didn't realize that it actually is your one month anniversary. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> moving along on the agenda. Uh, the next item is the consent agenda. Uh, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. I second, Steve. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Um, is there any discussion? Just one item in discussion. Uh, I wanted to uh, point out, just in case you referred to it later, um, on the um, budget recap report, um, the Levy balance amount down the last uh, dollar figures in the, on the right hand side there. Um, the 1 million, excuse me, 111,867. Um, there's a lot of ones there, but there's one missing that actually should be 1,117,876. So just pass that along. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any further discussion on the consent agenda? Okay, very good. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Um, Malavika? Yes, Steve. Sylvia? Yes. Amanda? Yes. Yeah. Maggie? Yes. Judy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Craig? Yes. And my own vote is yes. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is public with comment. Hearing and seeing no one, we'll move on. Reports and communications. Um, first item there is the friends and uh, have no one here to represent the friends. So I will fill in uh, just a 
real highlights of things from their meetings. Um, they had uh, their financial advisor there um, and uh, from Quad City Bank and Trust. And so he gave them a quick review of their financial position and um, delivered to them financial reports on their investments and, and those sorts of things. And, and they are in good shape. So um, then they also had a presentation from uh, the early literacy coordinator, uh, same presentation basically that we had from uh, Allison uh, McGahey. And so uh, that was nice. And uh, let's see, um, as far as other things they were talking about, their annual meeting is coming up in April. Um, I believe that that's still pretty, that, that now that's pretty much just a regular meeting of their board. Um, at one time it was a, it was a dinner and things and pretty nice, but um, attendance uh, kind of fell off and kind of made that a little more expensive than it should be for the people or I guess for the number of people that were attending thought it was worth the investment. But anyway, uh, that used to be very nice. Um, let's see, I think that's the highlights from their meetings. Um, next item under reports and communications is committee reports. Um, finance, anything from finance, Tom? Um, no, just go back to your comment about a budget recap. We're two thirds of the way through the year. And if you look at our expense, spending, um, our total levy spending was right at two thirds. So looks like we're hitting right on the mark. Okay, thank you. Next item under committee reports is personnel. Amanda, anything? Uh, nope, the only thing we would have is that we, the personnel committee plus seat will be meeting right after this with Jeff to just discuss goals and objectives, but other than that, nothing to report. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. Next time under committee reports is advocacy. Alavika. Um, thank you, Steve. Uh, something I want to thank Lexi and all the staff. Uh, we meet every month uh, for the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee and our liaison on the committee. And they all are doing excellent, excellent work. Thank you, Lexi, to you and all. Uh, we, we, we are into various things that the staff has brought up and, you know, progressing towards making it happen. And the first thing was, you know, testing. We have testing for various uh, open positions at, at the library. You know, uh, so, so, you know, how are the tests, you know, how people comprehend, how they understand. So trying to see how can we make any changes to it. So we're working on that. Uh, trying to think of how we could advertise positions that are open across various platforms so they could reach various uh, community uh, 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 people within our community and outside. Outreach has been doing an excellent job, of course. We all know with all the social media platforms that we talk advertise on, but they have this very committed young lady, a student from I think Davenport West, if I'm not mistaken, and she is helping us uh, do various uh, translations of uh, you know for signages and things like that. Very very committed young lady. She's helping us with that. Uh, I had gotten in touch with Target. Target uh, 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 is very much interested in helping with volunteering and things like that. And I have asked, I've not got a reply yet. As I told them, I'd come and sit in your office to get them. Uh, uh, we are trying to see uh, if uh, uh, we can get some kind of contribution, donations, especially now Fairmont has the summer uh, pic picnic. We call it a picnic. No, we get have that summer party. getting right. Com the community party, right? Yeah, that we have during summer, so if they can come in and you know help us. So I'm working on that. The other fantastic thing I came across was I was online for some reason, and I see that Augustana across the river, of course, had this lid guy done by the Augustana University Library, which said, "How do you use your Rock Island Public Library?" Now, of course, I took that link and I have shared it with my colleagues at SAU Library because for the last two, three years, we have been working uh, with our outreach department here. That's the DPL outreach department. And we've had uh, 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 Brittany, Allison, everybody coming in. 
on doing student memberships. So we, we, we have concentrated on student memberships. So how can we go further and let students, staff, everybody know, hey, this is, you know, this is something of a resource that you can go to. So everybody at my library has loved the lift guide. We probably are going to work on one, you know, how to use your Delaware Public Library situation. This was interesting. Second last point in my list. I was at this little luncheon uh, uh, to honor uh, Danforth uh, High School students uh, uh, selected by different Danforth schools. And it was organized by the National Society for the Daughters of the American Revolution. The Hannah Caldwell chapter uh, is their local chapter. And they had just glorious words to talk about our Eastern uh, branch of the library because they meet at the Eastern branch and they were so, so appreciative of the fact of, you know, how our library is, the approach, you know, things like that. And I got to know from them, they absolutely heavily use our online uh, library um, reservation system, the uh, uh, room reservation system that we have. So it was like so pleasant. And during that, I had this short opportunity to let them know about our techno items that we have in the library. They were like <laughs> flabbergasted that we do all that. So it was excellent. A lot of time here, but I had to write it down. All about <laughs> this is um, last month, the month before, I don't remember. Uh, the city of Danforth invited me to talk on their podcast, Pulse, I believe. And they called me to talk because I was one of their first uh, student members of the cohort Davenport U uh, class. And uh, we, you know, we talked about the library. Uh, we, of course, showed off that we were recording that podcast on the equipment that the library has within our library premises. And uh, I know, and, and Steve, please, uh, sorry, Jeff, do correct me. Uh, I think they will be in the library uh, for one of the sessions, the Danport U, the upcoming yeah. Danport U, they'll be in the uh, sessions. Uh, so I talked about, uh, you know, uh, how we go about with the forms that we have on the city of Danport's uh, website to be a trustee, you know, that kind of stuff and, you know, various things. So. Uh, and again, during then, during the Pulse um, broadcast, again, I pushed our techno library, which many don't know. So this is all Steve and all of us. Thank you. As I recall, uh, Davenport U is what brought you to the Library Board of Trustees. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how they had that podcast when they had it. You're correct. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Well, thank you very much, Mel. Okay, next item is director report. Have anything you want to amplify or add to your report that you sent us? Yeah, thanks, Steve. So uh, I included in your board packet was a report on activities for uh, leading up to the month of uh, for this meeting in March, uh, and just a couple of things to highlight. Obviously, we're very busy, uh, and I'm very thankful for all the staff and their patience uh, in taking the time to train me and acclimate uh, my transition. Uh, so hopefully things are going okay in that respect. Uh, I do want to give a shout out again to Casey and then our uh, facilities management team uh, for the great work that they've been doing uh, with the uh, sewage issues that we've had, the plumbing issues that we've had at Maine. That's been a, a lot of issues that we've had over the last month. And so Casey and others, thank you for all of your hard work on that. Uh, it's not, uh, it's a messy situation. Um, I also do want to do an update uh, for one of the bullet points, number four, that I mentioned about the community center at Fairmount. Mm -hmm. uh, Lexi and I were able to meet with the administrative services manager and parks and recreation uh, director for the city uh, last week to discuss a uh, status update on where that project sits. And so right now the city has issued that RFQ uh, and approved the bid already for uh, the vendor, which is OPM. And they're planning on doing two phases for this project. The first phase is going to be community input, which we're obviously going to be part of, and we're going to see that in the coming months. And then the second phase is going to be closer to the fall, and that will be the schematics and design phase as well. So just a little bit of a brief uh, update on that since uh, the, the report. Uh, and then uh, I'd be happy to answer any other questions that anybody has uh, on that report or anything else that uh, 
in terms of activities at the library right now. Okay. Um, I have one item <clears throat> in regard to the um, the piece you had on here about the person who got their job to talk with Shanice Payne. Um, um, several months ago, there was a, um, a boardroom series webinar from the State Library of Iowa, and it was all about libraries need to tell their story. And it was, it was, it was um, based on or prompted by a book that somebody had written that maybe even had a title like that. I don't recall right now, but I do remember. And when I read this, and you know, we've had some of these in the past, and it just reminded me that you know, we need to get these stories out there somehow. I don't have them, you know, uh, right at the top of my head. You know, other than, uh, but, but that's what they were talking about, is that when you have good stories like this, you know, you need to let people know that, um, you know, libraries are more than just, you know, books and things like that, that there actually are services provided that you know that really impact people's lives so anyway there's a way we can do that that'd be great thank you Steve. you're welcome thank you for the report okay next item on reports of communications is council lands on anything for us today uh, just a few things um, so um we are continuing uh of course the the, the uh the community room is one of the ARPA projects, and we're continuing to roll those projects out. Um, uh, one that um, is uh, will be being announced um, quickly is neighborhood revitalization. Um, it, it's it's sort of being called Dream Plus. Uh, the target area is a is really the Main Street corridor from Fifth to um, up to Locust, connecting sort of downtown to, to um, St. Ambrose, and then. From Scott over to Warren, it's kind of a big area for, you know, really. It sounds like a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money. Um, Four point one million dollars. So part of that will focus on existing homeowners. It will be an enhanced dream project for them, uh, up to forty thousand dollars, and then um, and then make it an abandoned properties, which um, is um, the city will actually be taking properties, which is you know revolutionary thing. I've been pushing for for. 10 years <laughs> um, and they're finally going to start doing that and then they will put out an RFP set for investors for individuals you know home builders they're, they're doing looking at lots and everything but the idea is to really you know focus on a particular area they were looking for one that had you know a lot of vacant demand of properties uh, was had good connections um in terms of uh and was really visible and that was we looked at many, I kind of helped develop the project. We looked at many uh, areas, and that was the one that had it has a tremendous visibility in the city as well. So, in any case, um, so the Dream Plus will roll out first, and then the um, vacant and abandoned properties, uh, which only that's the only name we have for that right now, will roll out second, all in that area. So, hopefully, we'll be able to maybe replicate this elsewhere in the city. But this, um, the capability of the city to, to um, to take uh, properties, uh, vacant properties, which they've just been very hesitant about. It, this will be a lot of them, and hopefully we'll build that capacity within the city so we can do this other places, and it won't be such a fearful thing. Um, Iowa has very powerful laws for allowing people to do that. It's the, the strongest, some of the strongest laws in the country. So, um, in any case, and they're not new on the books. So, um, that you'll be hearing about that. Um, the Violence Interrupters uh, Program, which is um, another program which will, um, is there is an RFP out for the admin, the director of that. And I know that some staff and some community members are going to another meeting in New York in a couple of weeks, I think. And so they'll be, um, they'll be I think next week. So they'll be, um, there, there's a there's a company that they're working with to help launch this out. So, um, so that's another thing, and that's a very innovative. I suspect one that some people, <laughs> but you know, it's something I think the staff has looked at has been vetted. Um, it isn't the same old way of you know doing business. We deal with. Um, you know, um, challenges in our older neighborhoods, and so I'm certainly going to get to work, and that's, you know, this is what we're, it's our best effort. Another thing that is, you've heard about, I'm sure that impacts downtown, um, is, uh, there's two things. First, the Canadian Pacific uh, merger, which um, I am also part of that. Uh, the 
group that's working on that. Um, it has a tremendous impact on the ward I represent, and which is some, for some of the poorest census tracts in the city. And so uh, I can't talk about details, but um, we have met with the, um, the Transportation Board. We have met with uh, Canadian Pacific. They ask what you want. The staff prepared a very um, detailed report that looks at really things you've probably heard about, uh, you know, accessibility, safety, quality of life, and, you know, and, and how much impact um, uh, on, a, you know, on, on people that don't have a lot. Um, and so um, that has gone to them, and now we, they will be coming back with their sort of, okay, here's what we propose, because this is a big list that was sent. So, um, which it should be, you know, because it's going to be a big impact. Um, so they would like, certainly like to have us on board as a city and, okay, we're okay with this quickly, but that doesn't mean they're going to, because it's a big, and we're, of course, asking them to pay for all this. So, um, so <laughs> it's a big list <laughs> in any case, but, um, so, but it is in negotiation right now. So that's going on. The last thing I want to talk about today that is going on actively right now is the two-way street um, conversion that's before city council. Um, there are, um, um, there will be, there is a survey and it is only up until tomorrow. So if you haven't taken it, please do um, go on. It just, it is very brief. It asks for your name, your, did you take it? It asks for your name, your address, and, and then, and, and then a comment basically. Um, so it's really short. It doesn't take very long. Um, and they, you know, they're really interested and they will be gathering zip codes. So they'll be kind of be able to see where people are that are responding to it. Um, so please take that. And then there are three meetings. Um, because again, one of the things that was, uh, by some was felt that, you know, there hasn't been enough public conversation about this. Although I think the public conversation started in 1986, <laughs> but anyway, but we're going to, but now we're getting serious, I guess. So, um, the uh, so the um, meetings are uh, at the Putnam Museum, uh, five thirty on um, March 29th, thirtieth um, at five thirty at Putnam, and then Thursday, March thirty first at the EICC campus downtown. It's eleven a.m. on Thursday, and then there's one on um, Friday, April first. No, Saturday. I'm so sorry. I'm having a hard time. Saturday, April 2nd at St. Ambrose. So uh, we're trying to, you know, have a number of conversations. So if you can attend the meetings, or give your input, but the, the, the uh, survey is only up through tomorrow. Um, so um, that's certainly a big topic of conversation mm -hmm. uh, that will impact your town as well. So um, I don't really have anything else. Um, it's a pretty busy schedule right now. <laughs> any questions or comments for Maria? I just had a question. The property is being demolished or are they, is no, it it's not a demolition program. Okay, it's an idea to retain the Yeah, in fact I, I said to this is not a, this is not a demo. If we take something down, we have to put something up, right? So mm -hmm. this is not a demolition program. So I was I've been pretty uh and I think we've had a number well my personal opinion we've had enough of that. <laughs> so the point is not So they'll try to recap the songs. Beg your pardon. Trying to rehab people. Correct. Yeah, the idea is, yeah, and then, so they will be taking lots as well. You know, we've talked about talking to homeowners, we've talked about or new or home construction people, uh, we've talked about, um, you know, developers, we've talked about individuals. So it won't be an RFP for one person to do all of this. It will be, hey, here's the, here's the portfolio, and we don't know what those grants will be. There'll be some sort of grant program with them. The, the goal of both of these is uh, generally home ownership, single you know, single family home ownership. There is a portion of the money in Dream Plus for uh, rentals. It's a smaller amount, um, and and because it, the the city recognizes that there are many rental program, there are many rentals along this, and so that they're not going to turn to single family. But to, if they look better along the corridor, that's important as well. So that's why that was left in there. But um, yeah, no, this is not a demolition. Okay. So. <laughs> Any questions? Welcome, Joe. Appreciate you being here. I don't like you Sorry, on the oh, yeah. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let the record show that uh, Joe Heinrichs is now present. 
Okay, um, I want just to comment. I guess the only thing I can think of about the one way streets from the library perspective mm -hmm. is that we'll, we'll put our curbside book out. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, one side, right? On one side? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just say it. <laughs> okay. Moving along. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is new business. First item there is a discussion of a code of ethics for Board of Trustees. Um, sent your honor in the packet with some information about that. Let me give you a little background on maybe where this comes from. <clears throat> the most recent uh, boardroom series webinar uh, from the State Library of Iowa uh, was the 10 Habits of Highly Effective Boards. And the fellow that presented that um, is a um, Patrick Callahan, and he is a former uh, multi-decade um, city administrator, and then also uh, became a, then became a consultant to cities. Um, and he has this that this actually is uh, that presentation. Uh, somebody from the state library uh, saw his presentation and uh, asked him if he thought he could adapt it to library boards, and said he thought he could. So. Um, anyway, uh, so he, he was the presentation. Uh, one of the things that he uh, talked about as one of his 10, um, ten, uh, yeah, 10 habits of highly effective boards was uh, to clearly define roles and relationships. And one of the things he pointed out in there or listed in there was a code of conduct or a code of ethics. And <clears throat> Um, the the reason what it, the main point that I got out of that was that if you think you ought to have one of these, the best time to do it is when everybody's getting along. <laughs> because because if you get to the point where you really think you need one, it's too late. So so that's why I bring it up here now, and, and this is this is just to uh, to open the discussion. Um, the so basically the question I'm putting forward is. Um, uh, this, what I, what I asked Casey to send out to you, um, is uh, from the, it's actually taken right out of the latest library of Iowa. Um, this is a document, um, and I looked at other ones uh, at other libraries, and they seem to pretty regularly include all of the same items, many of them verbatim, uh, because this, um, this piece or this code of ethics uh, that's in the Library of Trustees Handbook is uh, comes from the United for Libraries Board, which is a subdivision of the American Library Association that um, I believe deals primarily with uh, boards of trustees. So, um, and and this item is as it's presented in the Library Handbook from the United Libraries Board. Um, is a document that is set up to be signed uh, by by trustees, and then also includes some other items uh, that they that the state library thought would help um, to uh, help 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 us function more effectively. Um, so um, I guess just wanted to you know get your opinion, see what you think about it. Um, I think you know the things, some of the things that not well, all the things they have in here would be uh, good to have in here. Um, and uh, so anyway, wanted to talk about it and um, see where it goes. So appreciate your input. Well, if I could, I, I yeah. think I think you're right. I think we do need to <clears throat> adopt something like this. And um, you're right. Need to do it when tempers are cool and you know there isn't a lot of discussion. Um, and I do think we have, because of what's happening in the state and the country in terms of uh, attempts at censorship, I, I th do think we have to address that in our core documents. Whether it's in something the board as a group adopts, or whether it's something like this where each individual member 
needs to sign and sign on the bond. Um, you know, whichever way we go, I, I think we need to go some we need to have something like this. Like bullet point number three, which kind of speaks to this idea. Doesn't doesn't necessarily say ban the books. Trustees and full, fulfilling their responsibility they should not be swayed by partisan interest, public pressure, or fear of criticism. Yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't specifically say. Well, the very last one about resisting censorship. Yep. Yeah. Is I think pretty specific. Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. Pretty specific. But I, I think again, I think this is this is the time when we adopt something like this, so that uh, if we were to get a new board member uh, that for some reason has issues with that, um, they would know up front where we stand. Can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, this is just, a, I don't have any opinion on it. Just do you, what, do you have any, because I think we are living in a different time. It seems we're living in a very different time in some places. Um, do you have, what are the, reasons for having a, you have reasons for um, sort of firing a board of trustee member, <laughs> or uh, should you? I'm just asking that. So, uh, I mean, are there things that if someone did, you would say, we don't want you to, or is there a way to remove someone, I guess, or removal from office? And I don't know if this has to be with this, or it's not part of this, obviously, but I'm wondering if, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe there is. Uh, right off the top of my head, um, I guess it would be. Uh, if there is, it would be up to the mayor. But I think uh, previous right. experiences here would say that that probably isn't. Right. That's even in effect. I mean, look look at what happened with the Civil Rights, Civil Rights. Commission a few um, years ago. Yeah. Wow. In fact, in fact, um, if if there were. Uh, the the, re, the leadership, the method of leadership, this board um, could be um, changed, um, but it would have to be by a public vote. And if that vote failed, such a public vote could not be held for another four years. So a public referendum. Yes. Have, and that requires however many signatures were in the last, and that's like 10,000. That's the signature. Yeah, okay. No, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. but that would be the whole board. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Steve, yes. if I may, there's um, just one area I believe in the bylaws that does address this, and that's yes. essentially uh, for the removal would just be if the person doesn't show up for doesn't six months. Right. Okay. I believe that's the only place it's yes. addressed in bylaws. Yeah, and, and that, you know, just, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we had to take that action. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I just thought I would ask this yeah. question. No, no, no. But I mean, because I think you probably, I think one of the reasons too is that legally, I mean, you know, like aldermen can be removed if they violated, you know, done a, I think it's a felony or whatever, which we had happen. <laughs> uh, so, um, but you know, but I don't know, they, I don't know if that would matter because it's not a, they're not conducting, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's almost like a code of conduct. Yeah, so I and mean, that gets I know that gets pretty gray and sticky. So, but in reference to that, um, in looking at other policies uh, or other boards documents, um, found one from uh, I don't know. I think this is someplace in Kentucky. Not that that makes any difference, but um, they um, have uh, again several of the same items in there. But um, they say, after stating these as guiding principles, the Fountaindale Public Library's reputation as an organization of unimpeachable integrity. Um, but anyway, as far as compliance, they say that if any board member appears to be in conflict with the guiding principles above, he or she will be asked to meet with the Board of Trustees to discuss the issue. The Board of Trustees will take action based on their findings. So I'm not sure, this is a trustee ethics policy, so it sounds like a trustee would meet with the rest of the board. Uh, that was a little unclear, but that was only, I didn't look at a whole lot of these, maybe six or seven, but uh, that was the only one I found that had any kind of consequences for violating their code of ethics. 
Any other discussion? The, the very last one on the last, the second page was interesting. Yes. Uh, don't promise prior to a meeting how you'll vote on a particular issue. So shatter our But I think that goes to uh, you know you 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 agree to uh, to listen to you know to all the discussion before you form opinions. To yeah. jump after what Tom mentioned, I, this is absolutely excellent, and I feel uh, in some point of time when we maybe use this or apply something similar for us. Maybe we have a board of trustees part of our website at, on Denver Public Library. I think we should have it somewhere there as well, uh, where we talk about our agenda and minutes and meetings. So, you know, future people, like, you know, how I was looking at our website six, seven years ago to be a, a board member. I have a clear indication what I need to be following. Good. That's my thought. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> You know, this could be, um, uh, it could be, come, I suppose, a policy. Um, it could be something that we have annual review instead of, I'm not saying, you know, this needs to be something that has to be signed, but um, it, having something that we review annually would, would keep it in front of us. It also could be added to our bylaws, you know, as a appendix or something mm -hmm. like that, too. So, anyway, um, we'll... Um, I guess move this along to see if they want to uh, approve such a thing somehow for uh, our next meeting. Okay. Next item is discussion regarding the upcoming election of board officers. Um, we did this once before in 2018, yeah. uh, and actually this document is from there. I did update it, although. Um, apparently didn't update my document before I printed it because um, I did change it or add a date at the bottom. Uh, I did, the only change was to um, indicate that it was in the second sentence, the only limiting factor is two full term, the two, four, two full term limit on board membership. Um, and that uh, was just following uh, the first sentence that said that um, our bylaws do not include any term limits for board officers. Um, not indicating that it should, but that's also a consideration, I guess. Um, so what we talked about in the past was, um, as documented here, uh, could have a nominating committee that would you know, select a slate of officers to be put up for election. And, and by the way, the reason for bringing this up is that our um, our election of board officers uh, occurs in this July, so that's every two years. So uh, this is coming up and wanted to get it out there to perfect in case we want to uh, yeah, set some form as to how we want to do this. Um, secondly, we can have open nominations where members could nominate others or themselves. And the other one would be a succession to office where every two years the president would retire and the vice president and secretary would move up to the next higher office and a new secretary would be selected. Um, the one thing about that would be that um, the nominee for secretary would have to be a newly appointed board member or someone who's just starting a successive term because if you did this two years, by the time the secretary got there, um, any time left <laughs> so that's a consideration there um, and I guess the other thing on there was just to kind of reiterate another question is should, should officers have term limits that's you know again since we're getting along okay maybe we don't have to worry about that but maybe also it's a time to address it <laughs> it's throwing it out um, so um, but anyway, um, just looking out in the future, my term ends in 2024, so that's two years. And then, according to the bylaws, um, if I were still the president then, um, I would stick around for another two years as an ex, ex officio member of the board. Um, but uh, so anyway, that's, I guess, I wanted to open this up for discussion. 
see what you think. Well, if I could start, um, I'll go, go to one of your last questions about should we have term limits on officers? I don't think we should. I've never agreed with term limits. I don't okay. think. Um, now, two six year terms on our library board, that may make some sense, but term limits on officers, no. Yeah, that's fine. No. It, it's, it's more a function of ability and people's willingness to serve. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. And the also, confidence your board has. Pardon? And the confidence your board has in the officers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and also, I mean, you know, there's there's the bylaws call for an election every two years. So I mean it's not like, you know, if you don't have term limits, you're stuck with somebody forever. Um, I mean, but that's you know just trying to include all the possibilities for discussion purposes. Mm -hmm. Has this board ever had um, this automatic succession? I mean, I don't. Not that I'm aware of. No, it's not like okay, you signed up for this. And yeah, I, I, I might be wrong about this, but I do think that that was the case, um, kind of before our time, Steve. Okay. Yeah, I'm not right. positive about that, but I, I do think that was the case. They did have the succession plan, and it was an automatic moving up. From the, on the executive committee. Okay. Back. Yeah, I I kind of remember that was. It was right before us. I, yeah. Did it work? In fact, I think we tried to do that in our neighborhood association, and it didn't work. Like, <laughs> I didn't say <sign> it. <laughs> well, I I think whether we had it or not, the question is whether we want to have it now. <laughs> you know, like does it make sense for us now? Um, you know, it's really, it's funny, like, uh, we meet as an executive committee, and this is something that we just kind of get a little stuck on, because we don't really know, you know, what's the best way to go about this, and, you know, and we're the executive committee deciding about office, you know what I mean? It's sort of a weird situation, and so we really do want your input is, it, can it work better than it has? You know, I don't know. And then also like to not think about the people because you might like the people that are there now, you know, but maybe there would come a time when, oh, gee, that doesn't work well. And so do we have a process in place that's going to make sense? That I guess that's the thing. Create a process. And and we kind of end up going, yeah, I, uh, yeah. right, Steve? <laughs> right, yeah. right, Tom? And you know. what is the current executive committee? That was fun. So, the president, vice president, secretary, so myself, Tom, and Sylvia. Okay, mm -hmm. so then my question would be, one, I, I would think that we appreciate the the uh, tenure and leadership, but what about the idea of having um, one other person, uh, maybe without the longevity for another perspective or something like that, mm -hmm. but having a, a fourth person on that executive committee? And, and what do you see as the advantage of that, Joe? What would you see as the advantage of that? Experience, them gaining experience of what the executive. Oh, I is. see. I see. Kind of like a learning, uh, like a, uh, I get. What do you call that? You know. I have to be very careful how I say this, but not a season. So what? Getting the seasoning. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Well. Right. Okay. That's yeah. Because we also talked about that. Like, okay, so the three of us stay on until, because we're all, well, Steve and I go away at the same time. Yes. We're both leaving the board in two years. Um, and so, yeah, who's who's in line to, A, want to do that, and B, has kind of experienced doing that. Yeah, that, that's got, I think that's got some speed on it. Might be unorthodox, I don't know, but it sounds. That's very typical. Is it? Because you don't have a closed loop then, and, and you have yeah. And your next, because the person that wants to be a secretary might not want to be the president. You know, I mean, they they might say, "Well, I'm happy to be in that, but I, my goal is not to become the president." You know? Right, right. Um, so then, how if we went with that model of adding another person for the experience, um, how would we go about that? Would that be like we have volunteer, a volunteer, because one of the things that I don't know, like I like to avoid 
is actual elections with voting. Like I think we're a small group. We're, you know, it's not a contentious group. Does it make sense to actually have elections? You know what I'm saying? I so that would be another question, Joe. You got some thoughts about how that person might be selected or volunteer? I would say volunteer would be the program of choice. And then if no one volunteers, we tell Amanda she has to do it. <laughs> oh, no, not at, no, no. I'm thinking of what if two people want to volunteer? Like, what do we do? Have a dance contest? I mean, I, you know, it's like I'm not. I'm thinking of it more that way. I don't. I don't think we would want anyone to be on the executive committee. <laughs> Didn't want to do that because really the snacks at the meetings are just unbelievable. So I'm. I'm thinking there's going to be kind of a groundswell here, but. I can go. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering too. Like we're not. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't hear Tom. I was going to say we're not a contentious group, but I always wonder in the future. You don't know what kind of personality yeah. you're going to get together so Could like this be, works great for us right but what if in the future whoever's the board president like it's not really maybe the best person in the group like overwhelmingly people don't think that like then what do you do if we're not having nominations or succession then what That's would so be the rest of the board's well, avenue we do, for trying to replace it every two years there is a process in place already oh, it is. Okay. Every two years, like this comes up for discussion every two years. And so there is that in place, you know, so you're not stuck, <laughs> you're not stuck with anybody right at this point, but yeah, you're right though. We, we, it's like the ethics. It's like, we are a very cohesive group of people and cooperative and respectful. And yet there is the possibility that that won't always be true. So hence, how do we create a process that will work no matter what? I think that's that's the question, right? Uh, if, if I could, um, I believe, aren't we supposed to do to have at least a few new trustees come July? One. At least one, okay. So we may have a new person that may be interested in potentially at least learning more about the board and we could at that point say if there is someone either on the existing board or that new person that might want to be this fourth executive committee person to kind of learn how the leadership of the group works which would give them that person a couple of years to learn because then you and Sylvia when you your term board turns in um, and you're off um, I think my turn I get I get I'm due for a whole new six-year term mm -hmm. this year so I should be around um, and so hopefully <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and so you know would that might be a good time to kind of introduce that thought because at least in two years we're going to have to replace at least two officers mm -hmm. so i thought i mean you know that could be a, just an informal kind of thing you know that one of the board members is now an at large member of the executive committee Anything else? Well, I guess we'll move this along to our next meeting and decide if we have something we want to uh, we want to enact one of these possibilities or um, Or not. <laughs> but not that not that what we decide would be written in stone because the other people will come in and say, I mean they, the board of trustees makes their own rules, right? Sure. So I mean, this, this, into the, this would be a bylaws uh, item. Yeah, so, so I mean it can be changed by it, it takes a super majority to change the bylaws, but not impossible. I think Joe, as you mentioned, as Joe mentioned, I just wanted to share that there are a few public libraries not I've not seen in, or maybe I've not researched that well in the state of Iowa, but outside, that there is an outside 
member uh, who, who, who they are uh, ad hoc uh, part of the executive board because they sometimes can get a different perspective, thought processes that could be shared. So there are people with libraries who do what you should talk about. Yeah. But, but this would be an existing board member. It will be an existing yeah. board member because they have gone through that process yes. of being on board, understand what the facets are and the applications are. So yes, okay. it's normally an existing board member. Okay. Yeah, so uh, next meeting we'll have this on agenda for action and we'll uh, take action to, uh, you know, how we want to do it. I guess I'll give this some thought. And, uh, you know, I mean, I ask everybody to give it some thought, but, mm -hmm. Just the, the process of how we would approve it. If next time we'd be approving a change to the bylaws or what we'd be doing, I'm not sure right now. So have to ponder that. Okay. Well, thank you for your discussion on that. Next item on the agenda is old business, and under old business, we have approval of the tobacco and nicotine free environment policy. That's tobacco and nicotine free environment policies. Uh, we discussed that at our last meeting. Mm -hmm. If I recall correctly, that's just a change to the title of it. Okay. So we have a motion to approve the uh, tobacco nicotine free policy, environment policy. So thank second. You. Thank you, Joe and Tom. We have a motion to second. Is there any discussion on the policy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, is there any? Let's see. Okay. Uh, there's no other discussion. I'll call for the vote. Uh, let's see. Sylvia? Yes. Thank you. Amanda? Yes. Thank you. Maggie? Yes. Thank you. Judy? Yes. Thank you. Joe? Yes. Thank you. Tom? Yes. Thank you. Craig? Yes. Thank you. And my own vote is yes. Motion carries. Excuse me. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. No. That's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I forgot to go yes. back up to the top. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank you. That's okay. Motion carries. Yeah. It's obvious. I try to change the order. So. <laughs> Not asking the same person to vote first every time. I forgot. Okay. That's okay. Too, too, too much excitement from the discussion about the election process. Okay. Um, let's see. Next item is President's comments. Um, I'm going to roll that into quick board training here. Um, okay. Um, topic that uh, is big in the news and around these days has to do with um, library materials and uh, challenges of those. Um, on the 9th of March, there was a Iowa State Library Program um, webinar. It was a panel discussion um, that involved uh, several library directors. Um, some of those were Jillian Ackerman from Bettendorf, uh, Kim Keitzman from Altoona, uh, Jillian Rutledge from Waterloo, um, and there were two others. Um, one was the director from DeWitt, and I don't recall the other one. Um, but this had to do with uh, book challenges. And uh, I guess what I would like to start off, just so I don't run out of time without having said this, is I would really encourage everyone to look at our own policy on um, the material selection, material selection policy. Um, it, it's fine policy, there's nothing wrong with it, so I'm not asking you to look at it you know, critically. But in the first paragraph, um, uh, there are uh, five documents there. Um, and if you're looking at it online, they're actually links. And they will take you to uh, the American Library Association website um, 
our documents there. They are the Library Bill of Rights, the Freedom to Read Statement, uh, Freedom to View Statement, and the Statement on Labeling and Rating Systems. I apologize, number four. Um, and uh, those documents, uh, they're not voluminous. There are several pages, but I encourage you to read those and, um, and uh, you know, just know what's there. And also read our own policy, um, which starts off by saying, the Board of Trustees considers reading, listening, and viewing to be individual, private matters, and that full, confidential, and unrestricted access to information is essential for patrons to exercise their constitutional rights. The library endorses the principles outlined in those four documents of the American Library Association. Um, while every, anyone is free to select or reject materials for themselves or their own minor children, the freedom of others to read or inquire will not be restricted. Only parents and guardians have the right and responsibility to guide and direct the reading, listening, and viewing choices of their own minor children. The library does not stand in the place of parents. Um, dropping down uh, to another point, the selection of any material for the library's collection does not constitute an endorsement of its conduct, conduct or excuse me, contents. Um, the library collection will be organized, marked, and maintained to help people find materials they want. Any labeling, sequestering, or alteration of materials because of controversy surrounding the author or the subject matter will not be sanctioned. Uh, the responsibility for the selection of books and other library materials lies with the library director acting in a, uh, according to the general policies established by the library board of trustees the director delegates this responsibility to the assistant library director who works closely with a collection development committee composed of professional staff um, and it goes through the selection criteria one of those which is the accuracy of the information which come back to you, I hope. Um, and materials donated to the library will be considered under the same criteria. The Board of Trustees recognizes the right of individuals to question the inclusion of materials in the library's collection and give serious consideration to each person's or group's opinion. A library director reviews comments or complaints and evaluates the individual's or group's recommendation using the library's material selection policy as a guide. Um, just want to add into this um, that uh, in the past, we haven't often uh, had challenges that came to the board. Um, I don't even recall there being one since I've been on the board. Uh, there are, uh, and then even um, requests that don't make their way to actually being a formal challenge. Um, those don't happen as often, but uh, those have happened more often. Um, but I also want to mention to you that not only um, might they come to us for a decision as a board, but um, uh, I had a woman put a book in front of me at church and said, this book is pornographic and should I don't understand why it's in our library. The book is entitled Gender Queer, um, and it's a LBGQT, LBGQ uh, item, a book. It's a graphic novel, uh, meaning that it's written as like a like comic book format uh, with drawings. Um, and um, it's, uh, she, and I told her, I said, well, you know, people have the right to read, and she said that, I was not familiar with the book, um, and she said, well, I'm not saying it shouldn't be in the library, but I don't think it should be in the young adult section. So I told her, well, I'll get the book and read it, and you know, get back with you. So I did, I read it. Um, you know, uh, it has some graphic material in it. I told her that it wasn't a book that I would seek out, but it 
was written as a memoir, a true story, by um, uh, Maia Kobabi, and uh, it's a story of her as a as a young person, child growing up, and dealing with um, feelings of, uh, of sensing that she be non-binary, asexual, and queer, and that um, how she struggled with this and was the subject of, uh, of abuse and, and bias, uh, you know, as a child, and that she, you know, sought, um, you know, went into the confidence of her sister and her mother and how that not only helped her, but, you know, probably saved her life. And um, the book is, uh, as, as I did some research on it also, and it's, it's won awards for those very principles. And um, so, um, you know, I went back and uh, told the person at church that, you know, that, um, you know, it was an award-winning book, um, that it, it wasn't necessarily something that was for me, but that I thought that there was value in, in how it approached um, the author's situation and that um, could be very useful to um, other children in the, you know, you know, who are facing the same issues and um, perhaps would hopefully you know, lead them to um, you know, seeking out you know, the confidence of others who could help them uh, along with that. So anyway, my whole point in all this is that um, you, know, you may run into somebody you know, uh, just outside of the board, you know, that may put a book in front of you and say, you know, here we are. So I think this book ought to be banned. But uh, another one um, in this panel discussion, um, the director from, from Bettendorf uh, said that uh, she had a book, and I haven't read this one yet, but I have it on hold, um, that a person, and let me back up just a bit. I also gave the lady at church um, our reconsideration form, a copy of our policy, and you know, told her that how it would work if she wanted to submit it. Um, and that's been a couple of months ago, and I've never heard of that coming forward. Uh, so, uh, you know, that may be where it ends up. Uh, the the um, the director in Bettendorf in this panel of the discussion said that. Um, she also, one of the books that had been, uh, someone had complained about, again, it never, this one never made it, has, hasn't yet anyway been brought to their board, but um, is, is a children's book um, entitled, What is White Privilege? And I haven't read this book yet, but um, uh, I tend to. And uh, so uh, I don't know what, is in there that might be controversial, but that one really surprised me. Uh, but anyway. Uh, the title is suggested. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's yeah. just it. Both of those that you uh, gave as demonstrations, it sounds to me like it was just the title that got the, the drive going. Yeah. Um, and my question would be, did those people actually read those publications? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Um, but um, uh, also one other just interesting note was the director from Waterloo, um, who also is Julia, Julian Rutledge, uh, she actually had, they had a challenge brought to their board, but it wasn't on a, to, to ban a book, it was why, why something wasn't included. And this was a case where a person brought in, um, and I don't know if anybody's familiar with this, I, I think I've actually gotten mail on this a long time ago to try to get me to subscribe to it, but it's a publication called the Epic Times. And apparently, um, anyway, the, the person brought it into the library and, and asked that it be added to the collection and that they would donate it. After they read it, they would bring it to the library and the person that they talked to at the library was familiar with it and um, said, uh, no, I don't think we want to include that um, because apparently it's something that um, uh, at least it was described here was that it's a lot of there's a lot of uh, untrue news in there, a lot of things that are presented as facts that aren't such. Um, so they actually had a case where someone was 
challenging the fact that this wasn't in the library. And uh, they um, said that they handled it as their gift policy, and, you know, which gave them the ability to deny anything. So, and mm -hmm. they did that, but that was kind of a quirky thing, kind of in reverse. But. Anyway, so again, um, I would encourage you to read our policy and also look at those links um, just so uh, something should come to us as a result of all the stuff that's going on in other places. You'll be prepared. Um, okay. Next item on the agenda is to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Thank you. Is there a second? I second it. Okay. Thank you, Tom and Malavika. Thank you, Steve. Now, if there's any discussion, so I'll call for the vote. Um, Amanda. Yes. Thank you. Maggie? Yes. Thank you. Judy? Yes. Thank you. Joe? Yes. Thank you. Tom? Yes. Thank you. Greg? Yes. Thank you. Malavika? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And Sylvia? Yes. Thank you. And my own vote is yes. Motion carries. We're Thank adjourned. You. Thank you everyone for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Jeff? Thank you. Oh.